Hello, I'm Kendra Winchester, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, Dylan's also here. He's destroying a giraffe. So, yeah, um, that's what he's doing, in case you're wondering. He is being very violent towards the poor stuffed giraffe. Anyway, today we are going to be doing my book haul for my birthday and book of the month and just general books. The first bookish thing that I got for my birthday was the shelves. So you should be able to see a different aerial view of the shelves uh, but yeah they are beautiful um, I put them together uh, while I was listening to Carrie Fisher's uh, second memoir and it was just a great experience I put them together and uh, organized books and put them on the shelves and so now they're gorgeous and beautiful so the next thing I got was uh, like pop figurines these are little keychain ones um, I have never owned any of these. I see them all the time on you guys' Instagram and on videos and different things, bookshelves, they are stink and adorable. So my friend got me the Hermione Granger one and the Severus Snape one. Uh, they're just adorable and she got me the uh, Birdie Watts Every Flavored Beans, which is actually Jelly Belly brand, but yeah, uh, they are adorable and they're going on my Harry Potter shelf so they can be with friends. <laughs> Another thing I got is this book here which is, sorry, there's a lot of glare today. Um, the Man Who Has It All, From Frazzled to Fabulous, How to Juggle a Successful Career, Fatherhood, Me Time, and Looking Good. You have to hear the back cover copy because it's just too perfect. Is it really possible for men to juggle a successful career, fatherhood, me time, and looking good? Achieving that elusive balance without going insane requires support and advice. The Man Who Has It All is here to help. And basically, it's, you can see, like, there's a man dusting on the back. It's a book of satire on the patronizing tone and the ridiculous things that people say to women in self-help books and in magazines and different things. So this book is hilarious. Um, my friend Beth got it for me and it's perfect. So thank you, Beth. Um, next up is a couple poetry collections. Um, I watched Jen Campbell. I'll link her channel down below. And she is a poet and judged the uh, Costa Prize for Poetry last year and she uh, joined us on the Women Writers Chat which is a like Twitter chat that um, I help with on the US side it's run by people in the UK so I give them some US uh, support spreading of the word that kind of thing um, so she was kindly agreed to be our special guest and she gave us this amazing list of poetry collections by women so i'm going to put that thread link down below and you can definitely you'll definitely want to check that out um i put all of them on my wish list <laughs> so i got um uh wishing for birds by elizabeth hewer and then i also received what is amazing by heather crystal or crystal i'm not sure but these are supposed to be uh, great collections. Um, they're on her list, and so I'm very excited to read them. I am started a project where I'm going to read her entire list and then any other ones that I come across. So if you have poetry collections, either by women or men, uh, just send them along, please, because <laughs> I'm trying to make up for a gap I have, uh, which is poetry. So it's a great start. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you for my birthday is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng, one of my friends from my uh, Lit Mail book club, which is sort of like an around the world book club. You start out with a box and you send your box to the next person in line and then they all go in a circle and eventually after a few years your box comes back to you. <laughs> well, we also have like book exchanges and like wish lists. So if you want to send someone something for their birthday, you can. So someone kindly sent this to me and I've read it a few years ago and loved it and I cannot wait for Celeste Ng's new book to come out. Yes, very excited. Next is my book of the month box. So the first book that I got is of course Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. I read her first book and I enjoyed it but I'm very interested in her more as a publishing phenomenon because she had only written a few other books under a pseudonym and so yeah, it's, her story is really interesting and in how it took off. So I'm really fascinated in her and also sometimes I just want to read a thriller and usually I get those through book of the month because I, I don't consider thrillers to be one of my more like not really they're not really my forte I'll just say that so I usually take recommendations from other people um, to find them so yeah isn't that cool I love the design this is like my favorite colors I had a tie-dyed green and blue room when I was in high school yes so this is great this book is my, I guess, official selection, whatever. Um, I already had the Leavers and Priest Daddy, so this was uh, the one 
on my list that I didn't have, and this is supposed to be about um, a woman who comes to nanny for this other woman, and so the nanny has this thing going with the woman's teenage son. I'm it's supposed to be weird and twisted and kind of dark, and I don't know. It seems interesting. I've heard good things about California, which was Eden Lepecki's first book, so yeah. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> the next up is The Clay Girl by Heather Tucker, and this is from ECW. Now, Mercedes over at Marcy's Bookish Musings um, did a review on this, and I have already read this, but this is a haul, so I'm just going to say it is fantastic. This is about Ari, uh, who's about six, when it starts out, and it's like 1960s Canada, and she's going up to live with her aunt after her dad commits suicide um, when it's discovered that he has been molesting his daughters and one of them gets pregnant and so yeah it really is really intense lots of trigger warnings in this book uh, I'll talk about this more when the wrap-up goes up but yeah it's really good so if you haven't picked it up already you, you definitely should it's as good as uh, she says it is definitely okay so books that I haven't read uh, from publishers so this is uh, the bright hour a memoir of living and dying and sorry about the glare it's super super bright and I don't have a cool camera that will adjust light this is by Nina Riggs this is out from Simon and Schuster and this is about a woman who has cancer and she's probably going to die from it so she starts writing this memoir and as a person with chronic illness I'm super interested in people living with a chronic disease um, whether it's cancer or not whether they're gonna die from it or not she lives with it for several years so I am really interested to see what happens with this this came unsolicited but it's definitely up my alley also look at that look at those end papers the gorgeous watercolors and things oh my goodness it is so beautiful and if you can see all of the different watercolor things on the jacket here and it has embossing of her initials on here like the the design is great so yes of course and deckled edges too like I don't even I just can't even see look at that isn't that gorgeous so anyway yeah really excited to read this I'm not sure if I'm more excited about the design or the book but We'll find out. Uh, next up is a book called A Little More Human uh, by Fiona Mazel, and this is from Grey Wolf. This is about a guy whose life seems to be falling apart. Um, his wife, I think, is leaving him, and he has a bad relationship with his dad, and it has sounded really good. I've seen several people pick this up, so um, I'm not sure if I've seen any reviews of it or not, but I've heard great things, and the audio just came out on Hoopla, so yeah, that just sold me, and look at this. Also, look at that spine and see how the design like wraps around the back. Isn't that cool? I think that's cool. Yeah, I'm a design junkie. So this is Aisha Malik's uh, The Other Half of Happiness. This is a sequel to Sophia Khan is Not Obliged, which I read earlier this year. Um, I've heard a lot of twisty things happen in this one. Uh, I don't really want to say what supposedly happens because that would give away the first book but I really enjoyed the first one it's like a Muslim Bridget Jones's diary type thing and my friend Sumaya from over in Saudi Arabia she recommended this book um, I'll link Sumaya's Instagram down below she has an amazing Instagram and her perspective is just fantastic like I can't even describe it so yes you'll definitely want to go check out her Instagram and uh, see other books that she has recommended because this has been really great to read so so next up is Sophia Samatar's Tender this is a short story collection and it's supposed to be like dark and magical and twisty stories but uh, the reading limit is doing short story collections all through the month of May so I hope to read this this month so we can feature it in some way because it sounds fantastic like how could it not next up um, is priest daddy and this is one of the book of the month selections and uh, this is by Patricia Lockwood and it's out from Riverhead and this is about a girl whose dad is a priest and so it's like her life living as uh, the daughter of a priest and what that is like I have heard nothing but wonderful things I'm always interested about books about religion and relig religious topics so yes of course I am here for this all here for this last but not least is the fact of a body by Alexandria Mazano Lesnovich and this is out from Flatiron books this book is insane now you might have noticed that this one priest daddy tender and the woman number 17 were all some of my most anticipated reads for this month um, and when I talked about this in the last video I did not know what genre it was because it's so insane it's crazy 
oh my goodness, I can't even. Because this woman is a lawyer and she's against the death penalty, but then she meets this guy and it makes her want to believe in the death penalty because this guy is awful and he's done horrible things. Um, but then some of his crimes kind of resonate with her and kind of trigger some sort of memory or something. So it seems so amazingly fantastical. How could it be a true story? But it is. It's true crime. Oh my stars. So I am super excited to read this book. I, if I didn't have stuff that I have to read right now, I would be reading it. Like, like yes. I know I say that about a lot of books, but it's very true. Um, they flat iron is put this wonderful little seal on the embossing thing right there. Um, so yeah, hashtag book design. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. You can't feel the texture of the book cover, but it feels like parchment, like this really light, delicate paper. And then the letters have like this embossing thing on them, but some of them do and some of them don't. How is that? I don't even know. So good job, Flatiron. Like they designed also, they designed Caravel, which whatever your opinion about the inside of the book is, the outside is objectively gorgeous. So yeah. Flatiron does a good job with their designs recently. Oh my goodness. Anyway, I'm going to stop gushing. Um, but yeah, I really am excited to read those books as always. So we'll see how many I get to. But yeah, thank you for watching and please, 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 if you have read any of these books, please let me know what you think because uh, I usually bump books up to the top of my TBR based on the recommendations that I get from other people. So yeah, always looking for those and as always, I guess I'll see you later guys. Bye!